Hey, how's it going? And today we're going to explore using the Shot Track to create some animations in Unreal Engine. And what we're going to end up with is something that looks a little bit like this. And this door just opens and you go in. And the door and the lights stay on. And we'll be exploring some other functionality with Sequencer as this goes on. So without further ado, let's get started. So to start on this, we're just gonna go to third person, start a content blueprint, and just go create. And it just takes a minute to load up, as always. And I hope to be making a series of tutorials on the sequencer because I'm coming to understand that it's such an integral part of Unreal Engine. And it's not just for filming, it's as much for animation as it is for filming. So it's very, it's very confusing in the beginning. We're just gonna look for a door. And I'll show you a couple of tricks on this. So we're just gonna get our door frame and drag it down on the scene like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and drag our door. Then we're also gonna go ahead and slow down our camera speed. If we wanna get right down there, just hit F. Hit, click on the door and hit F and we're right down here. So what I was gonna show you, the trick is, let's click on the door frame. We'll come to its location. We're gonna go copy. Then we're going to click on the door, then we're going to come to its location, right click and paste. Then all we have to do, once we got it all lined up, it's pretty well lined up already, is just turn off snapping, because it's not our friend in this case, and then just drag, it'll drag real easy, and just line it up like that. We're already done with something that could have taken me, used to take me 20 minutes to do. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna start and go back to the content level now. Let me clear door out of the search bar so our, our results are. So we're back on the content level now. Now this is what I wanna say that's confusing about this whole thing. As I was saying about the sequencer being as much for cinematics as it is for animation. Where is the sequencer right now if I wanted to add a sequence, which I do? Well, if I right click, it's not under animation it's under cinematics. So that's why I say it's confusing because the level sequencer is basically, you can almost call it the animator as well as anything. So we hit door and then we can, we'll call it door, go control shift S to save. Control shift S should save that. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we got our sequence, we can go ahead and double click into it. And this again is confusing because we're using the terminology from cinematography. We're gonna go ahead and add a shot track. And you could think of a shot track if we double click into it. I'm gonna go ahead and go shot one, and then I can go insert shot. Oh, and now it's gonna be one called shot one. I'll call it shot one twice. But basically what this is, is this is gonna create a container. So I don't know why they call it a shot. It could be a shot, but it could also be an animation. So you can think of the shot track as basically container. And then we're gonna just drag this. This is gonna be the hold the animation for our light switch. And then what we're gonna do on this sequence is go ahead and create the animation for the door. The other thing we might do is, I see that's my player start right there. So let me just back it up a little bit and get it more focused like that. It's confusing because we're going to click into this to create the animation for our light, but here we're going to create the animation for our door. So in a sense, our light animation is only going to be for 75 frames and our door animation is going to be for 150 frames. And then the, once something's in a shot, the shots can be moved around on the timeline in any way you want. So now we're going to go ahead and add the door. So we're going to go track, add the sequencer, and we want to add our door. And there it is. And then we'll click here to add a keyframe. Then we're going to click on auto keyframe. Then we're going to go to the end of the frames. And then here, over here, if I'm on the door, let me click here for a second. It's going to be blue. I'm going to just open the door like that. And if I go back to the beginning, click there and hit play, you'll see there is our animation of the door. So that's great. Go ahead and stop that. Go ahead and put it back on the first frame. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add our light. So to do that, we're just gonna go ahead and double click into here. And now we're gonna add to sequence our, our point light. Which is here, so I can just search for it. It's easier to search for it. 
I didn't bring the point light in, did I? Sorry about that. So let's drag a point light in here and let's set its default color to red. So just click there and drag this to zero, and drag that to zero. So there's our point light. Let me click on it. And let me just drag it up here toward the top, like right there. And go OK over here. So there's our point light. Now I should be able to search for it here. Search for our uh, sequence point light. So we add it to our timeline. And then what we're going to do is we're going to animate the light color and change it from red to green. So like we just did before, make sure with the first frame, add a keyframe, move to the end frame, go ahead and change the color to green. So I'm just take red down to zero, blue down to zero, green's at one, go OK. And then we can click add, oh, it automatically added a keyframe. So now if we click back and hit play, there is our animation. Okay. And it only goes there to here because we're in the shot container. If we want to get back to the door container, we come up here in the upper right to what they call the breadcrumb trail. We click there, puts us back into the sequencer. You can think of this now, the sequence, as our master sequence and the shots that we add as subsequences. So in a sense, the sequencer is now the master sequence and shots that you add, shot tracks that you add are like sequences. These can be rearranged and move around on the timeline because they're just containers now. So it's almost like the sequencer is now the master sequence. But if I come to the beginning here and I hit play, we'll see the whole animation play out. We're going to click on the door and we come up here. Now we'll click on the door transform. We right click and go to edit sections. You have this option to set to make the door go back to its original state or keep its state. So when this finishes, we want the door to keep its state. We want the door to stay open. But if you wanted something to go back to closed, you could adjust it here. So anyway, there's that. And we can do the same thing for the light. So to get back to the light, we just have to double click on the shot track that takes us into this subsequence. And we can do the same thing if I click on the light color, go up here to edit section. If I wanted to go back to red, I could put restore state, but I want it to just stay, stay green once it opens. And there's that. Essentially, we're done. The only thing we have left to do, if I come over here on the content browser, there's our shot track. And like I said, you can think of this as the master sequence, this as the sequence within that. And we could keep adding shot tracks and keep adding sequences, but they would all be housed within this sequence here. So the last thing I was gonna show you is we just need to drag this onto the scene, our sequence onto the scene. And you'll see it up here. When you do, it has, it's on the details panel. You can scroll down here and you can loop it here or set it on autoplay just to see what it looks like. So this is what it looks like if we go play. And that's it. Now I would show you one more thing to make this look cool. If I hit escape, all I have to do is hit control L and then I can change the time of day and make it dark, make it look really cool like that. Hit play. And it's cool, right? And that's all I had for today. So I hope you found this helpful. Take care and I'll talk to you next time.